Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Razabani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global, making his IFL TV debut. My man, Isra Taylor. Isra, how are we doing, my man? How's it going, man? I'm good. I'm good. How's yourself? I'm good. I'm good. I've heard a lot about you. Uh, Spencer Ferron has been knocking on my door saying, you know, this light heavyweight's coming up. Uh, a lot of talent, a lot of potential. Um, let's forget about boxing for a moment. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the world we're living in. Mm -hmm. Uh, must be frustrating the last six months. I know you've only had that one fight, but COVID-19 has kind of put a, a stop to many things for people in society. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's kind of put the whole world on pause in a way. All the plans and things I had in a pipeline kind of just got shifted about. And the worst thing about it, since there's no uncertainty about what's, oh, sorry, there's no certainty about what's going on, you can't really, you know, forecast or plan you know, uh, cool, I'm going to start resuming training here or next month or let's try to get this put in place for this date. So right now it is frustrating. It's, it's a good and a bad thing, I believe, because it gives people like myself time to work on my technique, work on things that I probably didn't have time to work on at the time when obviously everything was just so fast paced. So I know it's kind of a, it's a downside. I had one fight and momentum came through and it stopped, but at least I did get that fight in before the lockdown and the situation. Is that also important? Because sometimes you get fighters who, when they get opportunities like this, they kind of relax and just eat and enjoy life. Like, is it important for fighters to, to know that this is part and part of life? You know, you live boxing. Boxing isn't just eight to 12 weeks training camp. You, you have to keep yourself active and in shape throughout your, your career, like Floyd Mayweather says. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Don't get me wrong. There's other people out there who argue that, you know, you need to enjoy yourself and relax and whatnot but I feel like in my head my mentality is that you can relax when you're at the top you're relaxing when you can relax right now you kind of can't in a sense um and you, you just got to make sure that you're just taking over make sure that you're ready whenever because when, if you get a phone call saying that you know a big opportunity is around the corner and someone's dropped out they're trying to pull you in or whatnot you don't want to turn around and say oh I'm you know I'm not on weight or I'm not really that fit at the moment because I've just been chilling because I didn't know what was going on. That boxing doesn't really have time for excuses. So obviously with my career, it's my life. So I have to kind of treat it as, it's like a, it's a kind of extreme where it's life and death situation in a sense in my head. If I don't make it, then what, what else can I do? So I'm right now, I'm just, you know, cracking on, cracking on because I feel like it's an advantage for me as well because I know a lot of boxers out there, a lot of boxers have had to kind of quit or, you know, a hold on their careers and whatnot, which is unfortunate for them, don't get me wrong, but in my head I'm thinking if people are going through you know, this type of um, situation and kind of having disadvantages, this is my time to kind of step up and make sure that I stay on top of my game and make sure when it's time then I can you know, perform under the lights. What, what got you into boxing? Not, not many people when they're young think about becoming fighters and getting punched in the face, but what kind of, what was your thoughts? When did you decide boxing is, is what I want to go into? <clears throat> you know, as I started kind of late, to be honest. I started when I was about 15, but that was just a little hobby just to get into something. You know, I wanted to get into a sport. I tried football, tried tennis, tried basketball, and I was just, it just wasn't clicking with me. Um, but then when I tried boxing the first time, I trained and I went outside and I started vomiting. And I was thinking, wow, this is, this is serious business. And then I just, you know, I just started just going, like I said, every Saturday, just a little keep fit class. And then it's sort of building from then. I moved up into the, um, what you call the elite class, the people who are fighting um, and training for them fights. And obviously at the time, I didn't have any fights and whatnot. So I'm mixing up with these guys sparring and I can't lie, I didn't really have the, the greatest time in the ring. And I think, I think I was like 16 and I stopped um, obviously I went to college, did my A-levels, etc. I just wanted to see what I wanted to do. Then I started to hit the gym, hit a little growth spurt. I thought, you know what, let me get back into boxing just to keep fit again. And then, boom, the rest is history. I got my first fight. 
Um, and yeah, just it, it started just uh, it's like a snowball effect in a good way. I wasn't going downhill; I was going uphill. Let's talk about the people behind you. You've got some leading experts uh, within sports and, and music industry that are behind the scenes. If you want to kind of let us know who's there supporting you in the background, pushing you, pulling you, uh, and and push you to go on up. Well, those I want you to go all the way. Yeah, I've got a strong team behind me at the moment. Um, just trying to divide my team as a just turn professional. Um, I've got um, a label called LCM and No Label. So these guys are on board with myself as well. So shout out to them, shout out to Rob, shout out to Maya As you mentioned, um, Spencer's there as an advisor. He's helping me, you know, make sure I make the right choices at the right times. Um, because as boxers, we're so eager to just get in the ring and just fight anyone, anytime, anywhere, in a sense, just to try and get up the ladder. But um, obviously, it's a, it's a business at the end of the day. And on top of that, too, you've got to kind of be careful. It's a no mercy sport. So, yeah, I've got a good team around me at the moment. I'm still um, training in Nottingham as well. If I go to London now and again to do some sparring, I'm sparring with um, many of the greats at the moment, I'm sparring with Coley, um, getting him uh, ready for his world title fight, Chris Bellan Smith. I even shared a ring with Brian Jennings the other day before uh, Chisora jumped in the ring with Usyk. So that was a good experience as well. But it's just, you know, just trying out new things, just learning. Everything's just learning at the moment. So, yeah, I've just got to make sure I have the right people around me at the right time. And when my time comes, then we grab it with both hands. Do you see as an advantage people like Mika and uh, the label, the, the, the music labels behind you as well, the fact that they've kind of had great success in the music industry, that they, you know, that they can bring that knowledge and expertise into boxing can only be advantage to you? Um, hopefully, um, hopefully, like I said, it's not really, if, if you were to ask me this, you know, what I would want to be or what situation I want to be in, you know, three, five, four years ago, five years ago, I wouldn't be able to tell you that, yeah, I would like, you know, uh, people from the music industry to come and, you know, be in my part of my team or whatnot, but it all kind of clicks together, it all resonates in a way, um, how people can elevate yourself and, it's just down to connections and you know just strategizing little things and obviously since we sat down and we kind of spoke about um where we want to where i want to go my journey my vision and um obviously how what they could do to implement certain stuff and whatnot and how we can work it just seems like it makes sense and right now it's going it's going very well it's going very very well so it's a big advantage being around uh, being able to be around these obviously in a sense celebrities i guess but also being able to build my profile in the right way too. You said you've been sparring uh, Lawrence Acoli and Chris Bidham Smith. Obviously, that I know you're light heavyweight, but between light heavyweight and cruiserweight, there's a lot of domestic names: Chris Bidham Smith, Acoli, Richard Riakpo, uh, Anthony Yard, Joshua Boatsi. Um, how would you define your style of boxing? Um, um, yeah, it's kind of a hard one. Yeah, everyone keeps asking me this question. It's kind of hard to kind of generalize myself like that. I would say I'm a more, I'm a boxer at the end of the day. Um, I learned the art. I try to practice my skill over and over again. Um, I, don't, I, I can adapt. So I wouldn't want to say, you know, I do this and I do that because whoever I jump in a ring with, I'm going to adapt to anyway, regardless um, as the rounds go by, obviously sooner, hopefully sooner than later. But I'm a very technical boxer at the end of the day. Um, and I've always been told from my coach, Ray, skills pay the bills. So I've just tried to, you know, make sure my skills are sharp, um, my, you know, my timing's there, speed and whatnot. And just, yeah, it's just a lot about ring IQ um, as I, you know, improve my, improve my experience in this sport. But I feel like that's, 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 if I was to try to put myself in a nutshell, I'd just say I'm a very technical boxer who's, who, who thinks a lot. What are kind of the career goals? We see a lot of fighters coming to the game and for them it's just about making the millions as, as quick as possible. Uh, we know people like Floyd May Mayweather, Teofimo Lopez recently said after his victory over Lomachenko that a lot of people want to become uh, money Mayweather without going through the pretty boy Floyd stage. Uh, when he was at 130, 135, he fought the best fighters. And, and yeah, the money eventually came. So what's kind of your thoughts and analogy on that? Is it the same? fight the best and the money will eventually follow? 
Um, well, I assume so, in a sense. Um, but with me, I've I never, I'm not doing this for for money, in a sense. You know, a lot of people probably are, and don't get me wrong, I'm not you know criticizing if you are doing that. But with me, it's a it's a deep rooted passion, and I want to be world champ. I believe I will be world champ at one stage in my life. So, with that, obviously, it comes with the accolades and whatnot. But I feel like if you are doing this for money, solely money. There's so many other things you could do out there, which is less painful and less tiresome on your body and whatnot, um, that you can you can get money, you know. Um, we're living in the 21st century, so it's not that hard to, you know, accumulate money when if you really want to. Uh, but with boxing, it's a different type of something. It's hard to describe what it is, but I know what it is to myself, and I know that with that in my mind, I'm always going to strive for more in this sport. Uh, this sport is my life in a sense so I, I see other people you know they, people come in and they go um a lot of people have good careers as well but, and you know they may make a bit of money and you know want to relax at the end of the day you want to go in that ring you want to do what you want to uh, do what you can do and do what you train hard to do come out healthy and you know your opponent as well and you want to go back to your family at the end of the day it's a vicious sport so you wouldn't want to do this just for a bit of money you would do this if you really believe that you can go all the way and you have the right people around you supporting you for that as well. So it's just, I think it's more of a passion. You kind of need the passion behind it. And it has to be very, very strong for you to do half of the things you have to do in training. Never mind fighting. Fighting is one part, but training is as hard as well. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a bit of a, it's a sticky question, but for me, I can just answer that. For me, it's just it's just passion. I want to be number one, so that obviously comes with the rewards, I guess. As a fifteen-year-old who goes to the gym and leaves off and leaves because he vomited, kind of who who <laughs> are the fighters at that age that you look up to and you thought that's what I want to be like? Those are my idols. Those are my those are the role models that I want to be like. Well, at the time, I weren't even I wasn't even into boxing as such. Um, obviously, I knew the greats, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, and etc. but I wasn't really into it. But then when, obviously, I had that first session, I went home, I just started just researching, you know, just, just having a look at what um, the professional boxers, the high-level champions do, why they can withstand training for so long without vomiting, <laughs> and why I'm sitting here vomiting my guts out. I'm, I'm trying to trying to make sense of it all and then after a while obviously I started going a bit more started studying the the game a bit more and um, Andre Wood was someone obviously uh, current day at that time who you know resonated with me and um, obviously Roy Jones Jr as well with his technical ability so I feel like I probably got dribs and drabs of them um, I, I everyone I study regardless even if it's amateur boxing you know little 13 year old kids they may be doing something that I'm not doing I just always in my head I'm always learning I'm never too um what's the word too too naive to say that I'm not going to learn off anyone or, or everyone I'm, I'm always trying to learn so when I was watching them back in the day I was thinking yeah I'd love to be like them in a sense but I want to have my own style you know I want to be number one one day and I want someone else to turn around and say yeah um how do you box? Or oh, I want to box like Ezra Taylor. Like, you see how he boxes? I want to box like that. I want to I wanna be that category, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, that's how I kind of ended up getting into it in a sense. And, um, yeah, just putting, putting everything into practice, implementing it. And then when you do that, you get some type of self-satisfaction. And I feel like that at the time, when the passion's not that hard or that strong, that's what kind of gets you going and keep going and keep going and keep going. What would you say the best light heavyweight is in the country? The best light heavyweight in the country, boy. <sighs> um, I'll probably say at the moment, number. Well, I would say, see between Sergey Kovalev, obviously, obviously, experience and whatnot, and his resume on top of that too. You got, you got, you can't downplay that. Um, but on the up and coming at the moment, um, Dmitry Birov, because he is. He's obviously, like I said, he's a rising talent at the moment as well. Um, Berta Beef, he's he's a bit of a savage too. But obviously, these guys are in their own lane as well. But it's hard to kind of compare them because they all got um, advantages and disadvantages in a way. So um, in the country, that's that's in the world. So in the country, I'll probably right now I'll take my hat off to um, Joshua Boatsi. 
in a sense. I feel like he's got he's got a lot of talent um, and he works hard as well. I like his boxing style. He's relentless. Um, I've been following him from the GB days as well. So he's just kind of carried that same energy throughout um, obviously his professional career is flourishing right now as well. So at one stage, I hope to share the ring with him um, for a title. You mentioned that you sparred with uh, Akoli. Obviously, he's got to world title fight on the Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Budev undercard on December 12th. You also sparred Chris Bill Smith. How were those spars? Mm -hmm. The spars were good. It's good. Uh, they were, they're good learning experiences as well. It's good to kind of um, test yourself, see where you're at in a sense. And I've sparred Akoli uh, many times now. So I must be doing something right in a sense. Um, it's, it's a very technical spa with him. He's very awkward. Obviously, you can see how he is in the ring. Uh, sorry, outside the ring uh, perspective, you can see how awkward he is, how tall he is, how, you know, rangy and how he uses limbs. And, but when you're in the ring, it's a different type of, it's a different type of situation that you're dealing with. But like I said, I adapt anyway. So I just have to adapt to the rounds and, you know, you got to find an opening. You can't just sit there and just... You, and you can't sit there and just let them, you know, have their time with you. You've got a set pace and, you know, dictate what you want to do as well. So, Chris Bilan Smith as well, he's a good cruiserweight. He's definitely rating top three in the country, no doubt. Um, he's a strong cruiserweight. He's a good sparring. Obviously, with me, like I said, in a sense, I don't like to really use this word, but in a sense, I'm a novice in the professional ranks at the moment. So, being able to share the ring with these guys who are, essentially at the top of the game or hitting their prime, you know, going for titles and whatnot, where I want to be, it's just nice to be able to share with them. I want to get your thoughts, because I know your, your team's kind of music background, but only a couple of hours ago, you saw a clash on, on an aeroplane with Eddie One and, and Ty and Wayne. I'm sure you read about it and saw about it and, and obviously familiarised yourself with it. What was your kind of instant reaction to that? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, like I said, like I was saying, with the music industry, there's the there's ups and there's downs. Um, obviously, when you start building your team and whatnot, certain people, from what I've what I've experienced and what I've heard, even should I say, is that there's a lot of egos in that industry, and a lot of people wouldn't want good things to happen because of you know maybe the past or whatever may may have you know came to light back then. They don't want anything to do with it now, and obviously. If you've seen the plane, they had many artists on there. You had Morrison, Tion Wayne, um, Heady One, etc. OFB. And they're probably just going about their business, but probably going there for business, you know, and being able to, um, or be or having to go on a plane just to get to from A to B and then having an altercation on there, it's just, it's just crazy. It's kind of unprofessional in a way, but, you know, it's just, it's a life they live in a sense. They probably, without, what they've come through in their life, they probably wouldn't be able to get to where they are now. So it's just something that they probably have to deal with. It's it's hard for me to kind of explain or try to, you know, shed light on it because I'm not in that situation at all. But I, I all I can say is that this, hopefully they can come to some type of mutual agreement. That's not just, not just them. That's just everyone in, the, in that type of industry. And even the boxing industry as well. There's a lot of promoters and whatnot who... Um, don't want to work with each other, may have, you know, like red eye for each other and et cetera. There's little things like that is kind of limiting their potential, limiting boxers' potential and et cetera. So I just feel like I'm I'm not someone who don't really hold grudges as well, so I can speak like that. Um, so, yeah, I feel like everyone could just need to, you know, just shake hands and just get along, man. I feel like it's more important, like, these artists that have, you know, they live in a, in a time now where they can kind of self-promote themselves, like, Tupac Shakur, Michael Jackson, these great artists never had social media. These guys have, mm. now, especially in London, where most of these artists are from, where we've seen over the last two years, knife crime has been at its highest, you know, people killing each other, young 15 year olds killing 10 year olds. And it's, these artists need mm. to be responsible because people look up to them and not just to them, but also the lyrics that they're saying as well. Of course, of course, definitely. And I've done, I, I, at times, I feel like they don't really understand the platform that they have gotten themselves to. So they are a big role model in certain people's lives. You know, people who don't actually have role models, you know, may not have, you know, the big brothers, you know, the dads or whatnot. Um, they are an aspiring role model. You're, you're in a position where somebody wants to, to be in life. So 
you kind of got to in a sense you have to conduct yourself in a certain way but also you kind of need to give back to the community as well what are you talking about in you know in your lyrics and whatnot what people are just gonna eat up and listen to um so i feel like if you're not if you're not really spreading a positive message through that then at least you can be interacting with them to let them know that that was th- that was back then this is now there's a difference you don't have to live that life because like you were saying people there's kids out there literally kids 14 year olds getting stabbed to death and etc you, you don't want to be seeing that you don't want to be a part of that um you don't want to be seeing that on the news you know what i'm saying so but this is mainly influenced by many artists out there i don't think they understand the magnitude of what they're doing you know they're probably just making music but really and truly it's kind of corrupting the world in a sense but they could use that platform to you know better other people other kids out there you know the community so i feel like again in boxing someone like aj for example he's a he's an iconic boxer you know he's a he's he's done what he needs to do he's had his past but he's changed his life around and now look he's a champion and he's well respected and he that, that's someone that people or kids can look up to you know in a positive light you know um he's giving back to his community he's, he's still got the same team around him he's still looking after his mom like he, and he makes that be known so little things like that is what can humble other people saying okay cool if i do make it this far i don't need to be like this or i don't need to still carry on with this i can change my life around like how he has you know so again relating back to me i'd, I'd love to be able to do something like that as well even the position i'm at now i'm always trying to give back to my community always trying to be some type of aspiring role model i'm not saying that was the end goal of, you know for me but if I have people looking up to me, then why would you not want to spread positivity for them or, you know, help better their life? It may even better yours as well. No, absolutely. Well said. I totally agree with those remarks. Um, it's just before I end, uh, when are you likely to kind of get a date again? When are you likely to be out again? Anytime again this year or is, are we looking at next year? Well, hopefully looking at December. Um, I've been speaking with my team, um, a manager and so forth. And, we're looking to see if we can lock down a fight, um, maybe some somewhere in Europe. That's all I can kind of disclose at the moment. Somewhere in Europe at the moment, um, uh, December, obviously after all this this lockdown situation, maybe even America in early uh, January. Um, and I, I hope to attend um, a training camp in Vegas as well. Uh, that's probably even before or after if there is a fight scheduled in January. So. Hopefully December and January, I'm sitting here with my fingers crossed. And just finally, where can, uh, where can we find you on your social media platforms, your, your Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn? No numbers, no phone numbers out here, but you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, well, I'd say the biggest one for myself is probably Instagram, which is Ezra underscore the Canon underscore Taylor. Um, Twitter, I haven't really got around to, to doing that, really. I'm not really a... I'm not really a talker, I'm a walker, you know. I don't talk the talk, I walk the walk, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, Instagram is probably the best thing to, you know, just follow my journey on. That's what I update the most in a sense. But yeah, obviously, whoever is watching this, just keep your eye out for me. I'll definitely be somewhere in your eyesight, somewhere down the line. No, absolutely. It's great catching up with my man. And hopefully when we're out of this crazy world and out of this lockdown, uh, we can catch up face to face. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That'll be a pleasure, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Razi. Israel Taylor, IFL TV, thank you very much. Take care, man. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free, impartial advice on all your debt.